So here's the diagram we had drawn to help explain Kepler's second law, position vector between the sun and any planet sweeps out equal areas and equal times. Here's our position vector, and we're always drawn from the axis of rotation out to wherever we're looking. We've seen this a bunch of times now. This is one of the first times we had seen it originally. So here, for example, maybe it's the Earth at its distance of closest approach to the sun. Here's the position vector. And then one month later, there's a the position vector. And then all, all the way to the other end of its orbit, maybe at the six-month mark, there's a position vector, and there's a position vector one month after that. Based on the diagram, we saw that one month here traversed a rather large distance, and one month here traversed a rather small distance, but if each one of those is one month, what's the consequence? Well, that means it must be going faster over here and slower over here, which we then pair with the idea of uh, kinetic energy being large over here and small over here. And then the distance here is small and the distance here is large, and then we talk about gravitational potential energy in the system, which remember, goes to zero at infinity and is negative when it's closer to the object, right? And so here, when it's closer, it has less gravitational potential energy, more negative gravitational potential energy. Here, where it's farther away, it's got a larger gravitational potential energy or closer to zero, or just relating it to more earthbound sort of ideas, the, the higher you lift something away from the ground, the more gravitational potential energy there is in the system, right? The farther it is from where it wants to be. Here, the object, the planet, wants to be closer to the sun, so it's less gravitational potential energy. Here, it's farther away, so there's more gravitational potential energy, farther from where it wants to be. However, as one grew, the other shrank, and so we realized this is just a restatement of conservation of mechanical energy. Obviously, the only force acting on the planet here is the gravitational force, which is a conservative force. And so the sum of kinetic and gravitational potential energies is always going to be constant. But now let's take this from the perspective of angular momentum. So what, what equation could we use to describe angular momentum of the planet? Would it be L equals I omega or L equals RP sine theta? Just pause the video and think about that for yourself. Well, the correct answer is L equals RP sine theta, which may sound a little strange when you remember the only time we use this equation is for point masses, and we are referring to the Earth or a planet. Is that a point mass? Clearly to us, it's not. It's a huge object. But from this perspective, Yes, it is a point mass. It is a small object on the grand scheme of things, so the overall geometry of this situation. So yes, we can use RP sine theta. Okay, so now let's apply it to the situations when it's close to the sun and far away from the sun. So when it's close to the sun, it's moving relatively fast, which means it has a lot of momentum. But it's also pretty, pretty close to the sun, so the R is a relatively small value. When it's farther away, it's moving slower, so momentum is a small value, but it's far away, so r is a large value. So again, we have a situation where one grows and the other shrinks. And so we're thinking about how that relates in the equation. As one grows, the other shrinks, maybe the product remains the same. Maybe we have conservation of angular momentum again. Well, we know the condition for conservation of angular momentum is that the net torque on the system has to be zero, because remember, net torque is the time rate of change of angular momentum. For no change in angular momentum, this would have to be equal to zero. That means the net torque has to be equal to zero. Is that true for this situation? Well, what provides a torque here? Well, there's only one force acting on the planet, and that is the force of gravity. So at any location, of course, R points from the axis of rotation, in this case from the center of the sun, out to the location of the planet, so it's pointing outwards. The gravitational force points inwards. Ah, so we have a radial vector or a position vector pointing outwards, and the force of gravity points inwards. What angle is that? Well, that's going to be 180. Sine of 180 is zero. So the net torque on the, on the planet at all times is zero. We do have conservation of angular momentum.